Hey everybody, welcome back to A Week in Geekdom. Gio here, and today we're doing something really cool, really special. It is the top 20 anime of 2020. I would have done a top 10, however, there were so many to choose from that I had to go with the top 20. Plus it kind of rhymes and it makes it a little bit quirkier if I just say top 20 of 2020, right? Uh, also, full disclosure, this is just my list. I know people like to get upset, they like to argue, they like to complain, but again, keep in mind, this is my list. This does not invalidate your list and the shows that you loved. So without further ado, let's get into it. In this world, fabled creatures rule the land and humans are being persecuted. Somali is a young girl that escapes a doomed caravan and is rescued by a lone golem, the protector of the forest. Together this unlikely pair will unite and form a bond deeper than any friendship as they look for other remaining humans before the golem's life runs out. Somali and the Forest Spirit has a lot of heart. Somali is one of the most wholesome leads in a story as her naive self is forced to mature in a world that is harsh, cruel, a world where humans are at the very point of extinction. However, to me, the biggest selling point in this story is the golem and how he grows as a character, from an emotionless, stoic guardian to a protective, loving father figure. This fantasy slice of life journey excels in the quiet moments, as well as those big scenes with potential villains and opposing forces that threaten to tear this newly formed family apart. The hit rom-com manga by Aka Akasaka received a second anime season in 2020, this time around filled with even more laughs and heartwarming moments. We follow the adventures of Shuchin Academy's student council's president Miyuki Shirogane and vice president Kaguya Shinomiya's will they or won't they cat and mouse hijinks with more outrageous scenarios. The series improves on what was done in the first season with better comedic timing and wonderful performances by the voice cast. Kaguya and Miyuki's relationship is further explored, while the remaining cast also has moments to shine. Arcs devoted to characters like Yu Ishigami and Miko Ino highlight the stronger points of the manga and reinforces that, aside from the budding romance and wholesome relationships, everything truly is fair in love and war. Based on the manga by Kei Tome, Sing Yesterday For Me is a coming-of-age story following the lives of several characters and their intersecting stories. Rikuo Uozumi is a young boy without much ambition or goals in his life. For him, the best days were already past him. That is, until he is reunited with his former girlfriend and classmate, as well as a developing friendship with an unusual girl and her pet raven. Sing Yesterday For Me is one of the rare exceptions where the subject matter isn't really targeted at a younger crowd. In this, we have characters that very much resemble ourselves. The drama, for the most part, is real. Their worries and doubts are relatable, and when things happen to these people, we feel it as well. Some might argue with the later portion of the story, but for me, this series proved that you could tell a compelling story without having rom-com hijinks or random isekai trucks to move the story along. Boasted by gorgeous character models and truly breathtaking background art, Sing Yesterday For Me is one of the nicest looking modern anime that I've had the pleasure of watching. A shoujo manga classic. Fruits Basket surprised the world with its rebooted anime adaptation in 2019 with a closer narrative to the source material and an updated modern art style. In 2020, we received the second series to this reboot, and this time around, the story was more intense, adapting manga chapters previously not seen by anime-only fans and going deeper into the lore and mysteries of the Soba family's curse. You will laugh, you will cry, you will appreciate the story's effort to remind us how important it is to be cared and loved for, be it a family member, a loved one, or just a friend. Toru's journey is filled with joyous and tragic occasions, but it is her wonderful spirit and willingness to help others that keeps this story afloat. Season 2 further drove home that point by our main character wanting to learn of the hardships and pain faced by the members of the Soma family, as well as helping them heal their emotional wounds. Very rarely do we get sequels to shows, but most these days last a single season and act sort of like big promotional items for the original manga or light novel. But 
here we are. Finally, after so many years, we got the long-awaited continuation for ReZero. Season 2 continues right where Season 1 left off and follows Subaru's long, grueling journey. This time, however, the stakes are higher, with several of our main protagonist's friends put in harm's way because of the witch's cult. A few story beats later, don't worry, I'm not going to spoil things here for you, we find ourselves in the Sanctuary, a sealed area where Subaru hopes to find the answers he's looking for as well as rescuing those in grave danger. A tighter narrative structure with more incoming twists makes this an exciting psychological action thriller a must watch. Characters are better explored as well as providing more mysteries for us to ponder on. Part post-apocalyptic part sci-fi action series. Nut Studios' latest original work is an anime series unlike others of its kind. Set around the year 2400, the world is a polluted mess. Humanity is on the verge of extinction, threatened by life forms known as the Gadol, which caused around 90% of the world's population to be destroyed. Decadence follows a young girl, Natsume, who dreams of becoming a gear warrior after her father's death during a Gadol attack. After graduating from her orphanage, she ends up working as a maintenance worker. Her life is about to change when she meets Kaburagi, a veteran armor repairer with a unique past. This series has a perfect setting. It's action packed with visuals and story tropes that remind me of other series like Attack on Titan or Saga of Tanya the Evil. The action is intense and beautiful to look at. Natsume's progression throughout the series is noteworthy as well as Kaburagi's evolution as a mentor type figure. Decadence hits its viewers with an amazing plot twist in the second episode that completely changes your perception of what the show is. It could have been risky to reveal such an important piece of information right away, but I feel the writers did a good job of surprising us and keeping that momentum going with a pretty satisfying conclusion. I would hate for you to get spoiled on what the secret of this show is, so hopefully I've enticed you enough to watch it and find out on your own. Masakazu Hashimoto's original anime about racing in an alternate late 1800s Japan and America delivers a lot of high-octane action, but it is the care that went into crafting an international and diverse cast of characters that truly deserves praise. PA Works' latest is a thrilling racing series with a lot of heart. In it, we follow Apare Sorano, a young genius who doesn't care much for social norms or following in his family's footsteps. He dreams of inventing new technology and learning as much as he can about science. After a series of comical hijinks, he finds himself stuck in Los Angeles alongside his bodyguard turned friend Kosame, as they are trying to find ends meet in a foreign land. They decide to enter the Trans America Wild Race in a steam powered vehicle against a varied cast of characters that hail from Europe, China, North America, and much more. The racing sequences are fun and action packed, reminding me of a steampunk wacky races. However, unlike the Hanna Barbera cartoon, the cast of Apare Ranman all have individual goals and reasons for participating slash winning the big race. I can't praise these characters enough. While cold and strange at the beginning, the race brings these people together and a deep wholesome bond is formed, which I definitely enjoyed watching. The third original anime created by Ki. The Day I Became a God follows Yota Narukami as he meets a mysterious young girl named Hina Sato, who claims to be a goddess named Odin. She boldly declares that the world will end in 30 days. Yota remains pretty skeptical regardless of the odd events that start unfolding. What starts as a quirky comedy soon develops into a story of love and second chances, as our main protagonist spends more time with Hina and begins uncovering more secrets about her and how she claims to have become a god. A beautiful series drawn by PA Works, The Day I Become a God teaches us to value every day as if it were the last, reminding us of the power of friendship, love, and family. Based on Hiroaki Samura's comedy slice of life manga, Wave Listen to Me follows Minare Koda, a floor manager at a small restaurant in Sapporo, getting over the bad breakup of an ex-boyfriend. One fateful night, Minare drunkenly vents her frustrations to an older man sitting next to her at the local bar. Little does she know that the conversation was recorded by that person and aired the next day at the local radio station. Minare violently storms in demanding the recording be taken down, but little does she know that it will open the door 
doors to an unexpected career as the next radio host sensation. Our main protagonist is the heart and soul of this series, and how she commands the attention once she's vocal about any particular subject. Naturally, an odd premise would attract odd characters. Wave Listen to Me has a fun time balancing real-life relationship issues while showing the audience the inner workings of radio business. Gorgeous art that brings to life Samura's manga, as well as fantastic backgrounds in an unconventional, funny, yet wholesome story. Wit Studios back with an original anime. Edamura Makoto is supposedly Japan's greatest swindler. Together with his partner Kudo, they try to trick a Frenchman in Asakusa, but unexpectedly get tricked instead. The Frenchman whom they try to swindle turns out to be Laurent Theory, a much higher level confidence man in control of the mafia. Edamura is yet to find out what fate awaits him after having engaged in the Frenchman's dirty jobs. Anything by Wit Studios is worth celebrating my friends, and Great Pretender is no exception. Fantastic characters with an international gusto and flair that is unrivaled by the rest in the business. Fantastic characters and a really intriguing Art Deco style inspired story with thieves, swindlers, and mafia action. It has a little bit of everything for everybody. I highly recommend The Great Pretender. In a world divided by prejudice over the emergence of humanoid beastmen, we follow the story of Michiru Kagemori, a young girl who suddenly starts turning into a tanuki beastman. She seeks refuge in Anima City, a so-called utopia for beastmen to live peacefully. In the city, we meet Shiro Ogami, a wolf beastman detective. Together, they will unravel the mystery behind her transformation, as well as other mysterious ongoings in the city. A kinetic action-packed adventure, BNA knows how to have fun and presents us a tale of social injustice, racism, and discrimination through the eyes of anthropomorphic animals and their plight against the human race. In the middle of it all, a human girl who will experience what it's like to feel the beastman's prejudice as she navigates through her own problems. BNA has Studio Trigger's signature style with wonderful visuals, a great dynamic looking cast of characters, and a story that is filled with heart and themes universally beloved. From a journey of self-discovery to a tale of fighting hate and bringing peace into civilized times. Inspired by the novel of the same name, The Millionaire Detective follows Daisuke Kambe, a detective with an extremely large amount of wealth as he's assigned to the Modern Crime Prevention Headquarters, a division for officers who have caused problems for the Metropolitan Police Department. In it, he's partnered with Haru Tako, an honest good cop that is not really a fan of Daisuke's extravagant style. They will have to work together to solve mysteries all over Tokyo. Millionaire Detective exudes style. It has a bit of everything, from an intriguing mystery, a wonderful drawn cast of characters by Cloverworks to well choreographed action scenes, but most importantly, a fantastic detective story. The adventures of book-loving mine continue in this outstanding exercise at world building. On our second season, we follow our protagonist as she ventures her way into the clergy and is given her official robe. Mine wishes access to their official library, but to do so, she must work her way around the political minefield of nobles, high priests, and the country's elites. Ascendance of a Bookworm has excelled since day one by telling its story through fresh eyes, and by this, I mean our protagonist 
who is not of that world. We learn of commerce, politics, and everyday living as she is experiencing it for the first time. This world that the characters inhabit is very much like our own. Sure, there might be a few magical hints here and there, but it is filled with strife and injustice, but also the promise of a better tomorrow. This was one of my favorite shows of 2019, and it continues that trend with season 2. More exposition is given to the city and the politics involved with the nobles, as well as its army. Mine's journey is fulfilling as we continually root for her against all odds. What could have been a silly comedy with an odd premise turned out to be a heartfelt, loving story between a father and a daughter. Kakushi Goto is based on the manga of the same name from Koji Kumeta. In this series, we follow Kakushi Goto, an ecchi mangaka who is worried that his young daughter will alienate him if she were to find out what he does for a living, and has vowed to never let this happen. His daughter, Hime, is a sweet young child who wants nothing more than to live her best life with her dad at her side. The comedy in this series can range from the slapstick variety to the quirky fact that the names of both protagonists spell out the keyword of the show, Secret. A visually striking series with a heartfelt message of love and acceptance, Kakushi Goto pulls at your heartstrings while also making you laugh at our main character's ridiculous journey to hide his secret from his daughter. Think of a series that blends the visuals of cyberpunk. No, not that cyberpunk, but the genre itself with odes to Blade Runner and the fast-paced mayhem of a good Quentin Tarantino movie. Congratulations, you got yourself Akudama Drive. Don't take my word for it, Tomohisa Taguchi directed this original anime for Studio Piro and was impressed alongside Kazutaka Kodoka by works of Tarantino such as Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, and The Usual Suspects. So they both set out to craft a story that combined these elements in a cyberpunk aesthetic. Akudama Drive takes place in a dystopian future where Kansai became a vassal state of Kanto. In this world, multiple highly skilled criminals called Akudama have been sent to free a death row prisoner named Cutthroat before he is executed. Once inside the prison, they discover the job is much larger and more dangerous than anticipated. In this mayhem, we find a young girl arrested on a minor charge and accidentally thrown into the mix with the swindler persona. She is forced to participate with the Akudama as they break out the prisoner and work together not only to escape, but for a large payday, all while avoiding government-sponsored police executioners hot on their trail. Piero really impressed with what I consider the Dark Horse series of 2020. Visually stunning artwork with a greedy neon-drenched background, the city is as big as the characters themselves, with clever transition work done by the studio as well as an interesting lore told through scenes by cleverly placed PBS-inspired puppets. In all this mayhem, each character represents stereotypes and movie cliches, but where Akudama Drive truly shines is in the interactions they have and how they go about solving the main problem at hand. Midori Asakusa is a big nerd with dreams of creating her own anime, but she's afraid to take that leap. Fortunately for her, she meets Tsubame Mizuzaki, an up-and-coming socialite slash influencer of the same age who secretly dreams of becoming an animator. Both girls will team up with Midori's friend Sayaka Kanamori as the trio becomes the Eizouken Club and slowly work towards fulfilling their dreams of creating animation. Catchy opening aside, if you are a fan of animation and have a love for the medium, whether it be western or in this case anime, this is a must-watch show. Not only are these girls realistically written, the love and care that went into showing the process of creating an animated series or movie is more than evident in this. From explaining how characters integrate in a background, to showing us how motion and sound influence the scenes we are watching. The original mangaka Sumito Owada, as well as the production team at Sai and Saru, definitely crafted something special. It's well written, and the girls have set goals and will do whatever it takes to make them happen. We as the audience see their hard work, and the payoff is pretty darn awesome. 
On paper, this series should not work. An amnesiac, reptilian-headed character working together with his friend to recover his memories in a grungy, post-apocalyptic looking world filled with ghoulish devils and magicians at every corner tormenting humans. Dorohedoro is the awesome Q Hayashida creation that could, and now Studio MAPPA took it upon themselves to bring this chaotic vision to life in a pretty successful manner. I have to admit, I've never been a fan of CGI in my anime, yet MAPPA finds the right balance of graphics with traditional animation to create a blend all of their own. This is most evident in Dorohedoro. Why Kamen is looking for his original head, and who turned him to the way that he is. To Nikaido's mysterious past and ends devilish love for mushrooms, this series has a fantastic style that very few shows and manga can imitate. You'll go in for the crazy characters and stay for the wholesome hellish story that follows. The journey determines your destination. It is important to enjoy said journey and embrace all the rewards and hardships you encounter during the process. That is what we are told. There is something fascinating about the idea of travel and forgetting the things that bound you to a particular place. To take that leap of faith and set out on a journey meeting all sorts of people and visiting all kinds of places. Such is the case with Elena, fascinating by the stories of Nike, a witch who traveled around the world. Elena aspires to do the same. In this magical world, there are witches. But unlike the scary looking kind, here they are wise and quite colorful. Elena is a young girl that is determined to see the world and write out her own adventures. There isn't much to the plot of this show and yet I couldn't help but be marveled week after week with all the wonderful stories and encounters. How the series shifted from themes and genres telling tales of love, humor, horror, and wonder. The anime adaptation of the light novels is handled by C2C, and man did they deliver. A beautiful rich palette of colors with wonderfully drawn characters and expertly rendered backgrounds. The scenery was alive and well. You felt as if you were part of the journey, tagging along with Elena the Ashen Witch as she traverses the different cities and countrysides, learning about life and its wonderful avenues and characters. One of 2020's most underrated shows, The Gymnastic Samurai, breathes wholesomeness in this unique sports-themed slice-of-life story. Created by Shigeru Murakoshi and Hisatoshi Shimizu, Studio MAPPA brought us a semi-realistic take on the world of gymnastics. Placing it in the year 2002, we follow Jotaro Aragaki, a professional gymnast and former Olympian who despite his famous career never brought home the gold for Team Japan. He suffered a shoulder injury and is past his prime age-wise. His coach suggests he retires as a result. Raising his young daughter Rei, they take a trip to Edo Wonderland. There they encounter a foreigner dressed up as a ninja who decides to follow them home and introduces himself as Leo. If this isn't wacky enough for you, Jotaro has a change of mind during his retirement press conference and announces to the world that he will not retire, continuing his career in gymnastics. All oddities aside, what makes this show so great for me isn't the sport itself, it's the characters, their unique scenarios and their willingness to keep fighting against the odds. Jotaro is concerned if he's made the right call. His daughter Rei is his moral support after his wife's passing. Leo is hiding a secret past from the main cast, but yet his intentions remain pure. You also have the character of Tetsuo Minamino who is labeled as the next prodigy. He used to look up to Jotaro but now considers him a disappointment. Rei Aragaki, Jotaro's daughter, one of the best characters of the year in my honest opinion. Despite being in the fourth grade, she's a mature young lady who manages the Aragaki house while Jotaro is away. Artistically, the human anatomy is always very difficult to portray in animation, and Studio MAPPA did a fantastic job of blending traditional animation with CG to incorporate those difficult maneuvers and techniques that the gymnasts employ. The gymnastic samurai relies on the relationships and bonds formed between characters to carry the narrative along in an emotional yet satisfying 11 episode series. Here we are folks, number one. This was my favorite show of 2020. One that personally brought me back to the nostalgia of a younger me watching animation for the first time and truly getting the sense of wonder and excitement and tears of joy. 
I've never been a fan of this franchise until I decided to watch the reboot. Yes, I am talking Dragon Quest, The Adventures of Dai, and boy what a thrill it has been. In this reboot, we once again follow young Dai, an orphan raised in an island full of monsters who dreams of becoming a hero one day. But when a party of dubious adventurers kidnapped his friend Gome, Dai and his friends must take arms to rescue him. And what soon follows is a classic swords and sandals fantasy epic of a young hero rising to his fullest in the wake of the evil Dark Lord's resurrection, which threatens all the lands once again. Toei Animation went all out to draw this series, and what a visual treat it has been. Each character model is made with care, as well as honoring the original source material in an updated, flashier style. The fights are exciting to watch, with a clever input of CGI to accentuate the epic moments. The themes of heroisms explored in the series bring me back to simpler times, reflecting on the nature of heroes and the potential of greatness that all of us carry. This may not be in your top list, but for me, it made me a fan of the franchise. It also made me care for Dai and his friends as they set out on a journey against all odds. And in a year like 2020, with so many difficult challenges, these sorts of tales reminded me that we too must keep going against all odds. Well, there you have it, folks, my top 20 anime of 2020. I watched over 60 different shows in the year 2020, and uh, honestly, I liked almost every single one. They all brought something unique and different and made me realize how much I love this genre and how much I love watching anime and just animation as a whole and that you can be so creative by telling all these stories whether it's an adaptation or it's an original work it doesn't really matter at the end of the day what matters is that you enjoy it and you live life to the fullest and you get a kick out of seeing all these heroes and wacky characters doing odd beautiful amazing epic things so that's my list. Like I mentioned, I'm pretty sure you are disagreeing with the top 20. Leave your comments down below. What were your favorite anime of 2020? Guys, as always, thank you so much. I truly appreciate the support. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like so YouTube knows that you like this sort of thing and it promotes it to a bigger audience. As always, thank you so much. I will catch you on our next video.